In this tutorial in CyberLink PowerDirector, we're going to take a look at how to customize the Motion Slideshow template. That's one of 13 found in your Slideshow Creator in the Slideshow section of PowerDirector. We've had templates we've designed for the other ones. There are 13 total. And now we're going to focus on what may be the most complicated one of all. We also have another lesson on how to use all the defaults to create a slideshow. And you might want to consult that. Well, to create a slideshow in this case, I already have a group of still images on track number one. I'll highlight all of them and then click on the slideshow button above. Now we're going to click on double click on the motion template and that will go ahead and create it. Let's see what it does. I'll click the uh, play button in my preview design window here and we see in the first slide it slowly zooms in. The second slide it's moving up slightly. Third it's moving back zooming out. Fourth we have a zoom in Okay, fifth one we have, it looks like a zoom up. Six, I think it's going to the left, zoom to the left. This one is to the right. And so it uses a nice combination of features in order to uh, control your slideshow. Let's pause that and hit the customize button. What this allows us to do is use keyframes to change the way the, uh, the zoom in, out, up, down, in any direction happens. Let me show you, for example, um, what's going to go on in the, in the first very first slide, which I've clicked on in my default. A keyframe, and I always like to remind uh, users of this, is just the attributes of a single frame at a single point in time. So because a movie is not moving pictures at all, it's just a series of frames, usually 24, 30, and other in the PAL system up to 50 frames per second. And so all we do is we say, this is the, the characteristics I want at the beginning of this time sequence. And then over here, I have another keyframe. This is, these are the characteristics I want at the end. So if I go ahead and play this in my preview button, watch the slider move and watch what happens. Okay. What actually happens is, and I'm going to take it and move it manually here, you see the size of the image shrinks. There's actually no motion between the one yellow diamond and the other yellow diamond. If I wanted to make it shrink even uh, more, all I need to do is move to the second diamond. I can go ahead and click here and, and make it smaller yet. And now, if I go ahead and hit my play button, it will zoom all the way into uh, the, the, the vehicle, the fire truck. So that's one of the ways in which you can change uh, the way in which these slides work. I might leave the first one there. Let's see what happens on the, the uh, fifth one just for fun. I'll go ahead and play that. And you can see this frame moving up. Okay, so this one is, an, it is going up. And see the arrow? The blue dot is the original center over here at this moment in time. And I click over here. And now the blue dot is here because at this moment in time, that is where my keyframe is. It's at the end of my, my picture. And if I want it to move a little higher or faster or in a different direction, again, I click on the keyframe and I can move it here. And it, when we play it, it, it uh, starts at the beginning and it moves a little bit higher than it did originally. We can also change, add more keyframes between. Uh, we can duplicate a keyframe, move from one to another. So this allows me to duplicate or move. I can also change the angle. If I click, uh, let's click uh, over here at, on this keyframe. 
and I'm going to click this uh, left pointing arrow and there's the degrees here let's turn let's type in 45 degrees okay and I see it's skewed over here and you notice a change so if we start at the beginning whoops leave that whole thing there click here and we press play now, you'll see the picture begins to twist because I've actually changed the angle. Now, if I'm going to do that, I'm going to stay inside uh, the dimensions of my picture. I need to go ahead probably and make it smaller to make sure it stays there. So if we play this again, there it is, it rotates in. and stays right there. So I can change size, rotation, and position between my first and last keyframe. I can also change the location of the keyframe where it will move and then it will stop and then freeze for the duration. I'll go ahead and uh, click over here to the beginning. Well, I'll use a preview here. Okay, and we'll t now we'll try again. There we go. It rotates in, and then it just stays there from this point in time to this point in time. We have other lessons on keyframes to give you lots of the details. I don't want to give you a total keyframe lesson here, but it allows you to make some changes in how you do the motion in each individual picture in your slideshow. If I go ahead and drag uh, my triangle here, we'll see that this one shrinks in and moves up just slightly. You see the arrow, starting point, ending point. Let's see what the preset is on this one. On this one here, I'll drag it. It just moves up slightly. And I might say, you know, I want it to do something different. We'll take even less of the picture. At the beginning, we'll shrink it. We'll start down here and then when we go to uh, this point in time uh, we'll move it up even higher and we'll shrink it more and so when we go to play it we'll see what happens there we go it moves up and in gets smaller and goes higher. So you can do this, you could spend a lot of time uh, tweaking a very complicated slideshow using this particular tool. Um, but to do it, you have to understand what happens with keyframes. We have more than one lesson on that to help you.